In this video, we're going to be looking at the concept of the relative strength index. And some of the objectives discussed in this video include the calculation of the RSI, tuning the RSI to market behavior, and interpreting divergence between price and RSI. So what is the RSI? Well, it is a window oscillator, and that means that it has its own little window rather than being overlaid in the same window as price. And it is normalized to oscillate between zero and 100. It is bounded between those two values, so it can't go above 100 or below zero. Now the RSI comes with default overbought slash oversold settings at 70 and 30. That means if it's above 70, then you would kind of guess it to be overbought, and that is supposed to be a bearish signal. And below 30, it is oversold. So you would think that that would be a bullish signal, signaling something's potentially cheap, but not always. Once again, if you fall into the trap of only looking at the RSI with respect to the default 70-30 range, you'll find the RSI to be quite ineffective, generating a lot of false signals and missing a lot of important information. And the default look back period here will be of 14, which is basically a measure of how many bars or candlesticks are used in the calculation. So how do we calculate the RSI? Well, with a look back period of n, we start by finding the average gain over the look back period. So you add up all the gains and you divide them by how many gains there are. And you do the same to find the average loss. Relative strength itself is the absolute value of average gains over average losses. So AG over AL, which we can see here. That's the ratio of average gain to average loss. And then RS goes through a process of normalization using this formula that makes all the values come out between zero and 100, irrespective of market or time frame. So you must not use default 70, 30 overbought, oversold ranges. It's inherently flawed, and that's because it doesn't account for differences in market conditions. It will essentially give you unreliable signals. So instead, you should tune the RSI to the behavior of the specific market you're looking at. And this can be done simply via visual inspection. The RSI will be much more effective if overbought, oversold levels are adjusted to account for the upward or downward biases in uptrends and downtrends. So you can see how poor signals are being generated in the first example we've got here. You know, RSI is uh, higher at this point. Is it overbought, oversold? You can't really tell because at this point, RSI is super low, sub 20 yet the downtrend continues and it rises a little bit. But uh, if you were buying at this point, you would probably end up losing money working based off the RSI under that circumstance. You can see that the first buy signal persists through most of the downtrend. And the last two signals are telling you to buy at very bad times shown here. So this is the actual way one must use the RSI. The oversold level here is not 30, as the defaults would have you believe. It is at this blue horizontal line here we can see. That's where the line has the RSI at about 45. Now, the first time the RSI came to test that 45 level at the green arrow, there was a bit where it coincided with a reversal. And after every time that that RSI tested that same level around here, there was some form of support where the price could bounce off. It coincided with a trough in price and presented a great buying opportunity. You see, the blue oversold line was drawn simply by marking the level with a horizontal line after the first reversal from it. It was also confirmed by being a significant level historically, so used as a resistance for RSI on the far left of the chart. You can see here that was now your point where there was a bit of support off. Note that if you were using the default oversold level of 30, you didn't get a single buy signal in this uptrend, and you would have missed all of these significant signals and would have lost out on potentially making a bit of money. So. You have to tune the RSI because the RSI 
is not the same under different market conditions. So for example, uptrends versus downtrends. In the first half of this chart, the RSI is oscillating in the range from about 50 to about 80. And we get bullish signals when the RSI comes down to test the 50 level. It doesn't come down anywhere near that default 30 that everyone seems to be using these days. Then after the peak, market conditions change. We enter a downtrend and the RSI changes too. So instead of oscillating between 50 and 80, it starts oscillating between maybe 30 and 60. And we get a good sell signal when the RSI is overbought at around 60, about halfway through the downtrend. Now, the reason for the different ranges in uptrends is that the upward biases shifts all the RSI values upwards. The opposite happens in downtrends, shifting the RSI values downwards. So your ranges, you work off these ranges. And there may be more exact levels specific to each chart, but these are the general rules that you should use instead of the default 70-30 OBOS level, so overbought, oversold. Don't just use that 30-70 range, actually interpret what is happening and use it to your advantage. So we've got that general rule for uptrends. The overbought level is 80 to 90. The oversold is 40 to 50. This is different to the casual 30 to 70. And the general rule for downtrends, you can see ranges are much lower because you don't tend to expect as much buying as say you would in an uptrend. So for divergence, Divergence is when price makes a new extreme high or an extreme low, but the RSI is unable to make a new high or a low. It is an indication that the trend is exhausted since the RSI is no longer able to track price to make the new high or low. It is not a timing indicator. Divergence can persist for long periods of time before the reversal finally happens. So don't rush in to buy or sell immediately after something happens based on divergent conditions. So we're going to look at one example here that shows bullish divergence. And that is when a lower low in price occurs, but a higher low in RSI signals weakness in downtrend. So that's if the downtrend was really strong before the RSI would still be making new lows and it all of a sudden has lost momentum and it has run out of steam and maybe there was a bullish signal. So under this circumstance, you can see the price is making a lower low. The price here made it low, the first low, and then it made a lower low. The RSI made the low, but actually made a higher low. This is your sign of bullish divergence. However, the second side we can look at for divergence is bearish divergence. It's kind of the opposite. That's when you get a higher high in price, but the RSI fails to make a higher high. This time the uptrend has run out of steam and if it still had momentum, the RSI would still be making new highs. So you can see now here from what we're trying to point out, you've got a higher high in the price, but lower highs on the RSI. So that is bearish divergence. And you can see a continuation to the downside after this pattern occurs. And you can see with the initial one we talked about with bullish divergence, the price actually broke out to a higher range because of that post that bullish divergence and post bearish divergence we saw a continuation to the downside so in the first half of the chart we've got here that looks at the pound against the dollar it's a daily chart as well we get good buy slash sell signals from the rsi using the tuned overbought oversold levels so the faint gray boxes we can see all around here so we can see at the red timeline, the RSI breaks below that range. The red timeline here, shown the vertical one. The RSI breaks below that oversold range for uptrends. That is a bearish sign because the RSI is no longer in an uptrend range. So it's moved to a bear market range, which means you use a lower range as we can see here for your RSI instead of the higher one as before. As indicated by RSI, the market does enter a downtrend and throughout the RSI becomes overbought at the new overbought range of about 50 as shown by this gray box here, these ones here. And the oversold level is much lower than before. It's also interesting to note that the exact point 
where the RSI broke down. In the downtrend range, price also seemed to break below a significant trend line. You see there? That must have, you could draw yourself a little imaginary trend line. Price broke down. Well, the RSI also changed. And then the trend went from being to the up to the downside. So that was a very strong sell signal warning that the uptrend was over and we're going into a downtrend. So to conclude, oh, it's, it turns out I put a, a trend line there instead. <laughs> but to conclude this video, it seems that the RSI is an extremely powerful indicator that can be used to interpret very valuable information about trends, but only if you understand how to use it correctly. The majority of people use it in a very limited way with default OBOS settings. So there's OBOS levels, the overbought, oversold ones are where if the RSI is above 70, it's all of a sudden overbought. If it's below 30, it's oversold. It's not that simple. And sometimes we can tune it to get better results and not have those unreliable signals. So with the methods we've gone through in this video in particular, you are hopefully going to be more equipped to go and experiment with charts and the RSI and discover for yourself how useful the RSI is as an indicator. As with most window oscillators, the RSI is usually used to generate signals only and not as a trigger to actually buy or sell. So use it as an additional tool in your analysis, not specifically to buy something. You should never buy something just because the RSI is low or uh, short something because the RSI is super high because sometimes in an uptrend, RSI can go as high as, as it can hold itself in the 80s and the 90s before the trend reverses. And maybe it's, it's a healthy correction at that point. So the RSI can be best used in conjunction with some price overlays, such as support and resistance or trend lines and channels.